Hello and welcome to this little session I've put together on printing your images from Photoshop. I suggest you do it from Photoshop. Most people these days have Photoshop and it's quite easy to prepare the images. So the first problem people face is how to get the right size and resolution. Now Photoshop uh, makes that very easy um, with the crop tool. And if you go to the crop tool over here and select it, there's the little boxes up the top here. And the first one, if you set it to width plus height times resolution, that will do exactly what we want. So in these first two boxes here, we want to enter the width that we want, the target width. So let's assume that we're going to do an 8 by 10 print. So in this case, we're going to have a width of 10 inches. So just enter 10 and put IN for inches. If you want it in millimetres, just put MM, or centimetres, just put CM. And then next to it, we want 8 inches for the um, height. If you hit just tab, it will move on and accept it. Now in this final one, which is where we do the resolution, for a good quality print, you should use 300 pixels per inch. So in this right hand one, set it to pixels per inch. Okay, so now we've got a crop box, which is all set to be just what we want. And we can alter this. And what will happen now is we can move the image around inside this box. And that box is going to be the right size. It's going to be 10 inches wide, 8 inches high, and three, 300 dots per inch inside, or pixels per inch inside. No matter how large or small you make it, it's going to be the right format for printing. Now, if you're printing to put it in a frame, what you've got to remember is that the frame will normally cover up the edge of the print uh, so that you don't get a white line showing around it. So normally it's about 5 millimeters all the way around or about a quarter of an inch, something like that, that the frame will eat into your picture. So when you're cropping it, you need to crop it so you've got enough unimportant things just around the edge that you can afford to lose them without affecting the picture. So if I just crop this, and I'll leave a little bit of dead space. The main interest is in the centre here with these elephants on the move. I don't mind if I lose a little bit of the left hand edge there or the right hand edge there also the top and bottom hasn't got much in it and if we lose a little bit of that it doesn't matter so that's fine that's um, set our image up for 8 by 10 if we just now click the tick box it will complete the crop now if you want to be sure that this has done what you want it to do just go to image image size <coughs> And if you look over here, it's got it in pixels, but if you just hit that, change it to inches, you will see that our picture is 10 by 8 images and it's 300 dots per inch, which is exactly what we wanted. So we can just cancel that. So it's done exactly what we wanted. That picture is now the right size. Now, um, what you should do is save a print version of this image. Don't save your original like this because it will throw away some of your original image. So you want to create a new copy now that is correct. Before we do that though, we need to think about colour profiles. Now when you send an image to print in, most printers expect the colour profile to be what's known as sRGB. So we can assign that to this image quite easily if we go to edit, assign profile, whoops, didn't mean assign profile, I meant convert to profile. And in this destination space, which is where we're going, you can choose out of all the ones that are there, which there are loads, but the one that it's normally set to is sRGB and an IEC number next to it. And that's all you need to alter to make sure that's sRGB and it will then click OK, and that's embedded in that file now. So if you save it, so we click Save As, and we go, we maybe add to that. We want it to be a JPEG as well, actually, thinking about that. So we want to export that. 
you can't save as a JPEG anymore in um, in Photoshop. Not directly as a save as. What you have to do is export it. So if you go to um, export, there you go. Don't do the quick export. Go export as. You get a little panel come up. We want the highest possible quality. We've got all the resolution already set. Don't need to alter that. Just click export and choose where you want to put it. I'm going to put it in here. We call it elephants print. And there we go. That's saved a version of that file uh, ready for printing. Now that can be sent off to the printers. So now one of the things that people worry about uh, when you're sending a print, uh, an image off to the printer, is what will it look like when it's printed? Now the thing is, it won't actually look like the same as it does on your screen at the moment, because your screen is sending you transmitted light, i.e. there's a light behind your screen which is shining through to show you the image. When you look at a print, the print is relying on light reflecting from the print. So it's a totally different type of light, and because of that, the image will look quite different. Now what you want to make sure, and also the other thing that complicates it, is that printers can't normally print the full range of colours that a monitor can display. So there's likely to be some differences there. Now Photoshop has got a way that you can preview how the print is going to look after it's been printed. And to do that, you have to go up here to View, and you go to Proof Setup, and you choose Custom, and you can install a profile from your printer. So if you use DS Color Labs, for example, which a lot of people do, you can download one of their printer profiles from their site. And um, I've already done this, so you just download the file, when you've downloaded the file, just right click on it and click install if you're on a PC and that will install it. And under the device to simulate here, you'll get a great long list if you tick that. And this particular one comes up as DC Color Labs Frontier Luster. OK, and once you've done that, that's selected it. Now, you don't have to ever have to do that again because you can go to the save button box here and save this complete setup and you can just select it much more quickly. The other thing to do on this panel which is important is to click simulate paper colour uh, because that gives you a much more realistic um, view of how the contrast will look. So if we hit OK to choose that. So we've now chosen that as our proofing profile. So how do we view what our print is going to look like? There's two ways. We can go up here to view and click proof colours there. And we can tick and untick that. But an easier way to do that is to hit the control on a, a PC anyway, and I think it's probably the same on a Mac, is to press control Y to toggle it. So there's the print as it is on the screen. If I press control Y, that's how it will look when it's printed. There it is on the screen. That's it when it's printed. On the screen when it's printed. So you can see there that the image is just a little bit duller and lose a little bit of its life when it's printed. Uh, which you sort of would expect because you're dealing with reflected light. Now what this does give you the opportunity of course is to boost the contrast a little bit before you send this file off. So you can maybe make it a little bit too contrasty on the screen, um, which will make it more the way you really want to see it when you see the print preview. So you can just toggle between the two and you can make a few adjustments um, to maybe bring the print closer to how you'd like it. So really it's as simple as that. It's quite an easy process to resize your image the main complicated area, which is only the first time you set it up, is to set up your proofing so you can see what it's going to look like. But it's well worth doing. 
Because I know a lot of people say they're often disappointed with the colours or how the prints look when they come back from the printers. And one of the reasons is people don't do the, the proofing view and they don't make any adjustments of their prints to give them a little bit more oomph before they send them away. So there we are. There's a quick run through how to do this. In this month's beginner's notes, I've run through most of this process um, in the slides. So you've got a step by step sequence there you can follow. So once again, thanks for um, being here and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Cheers.